All right. Thanks, folks. Um, thanks for st sticking with us through the afternoon. It's um, April 20. It's a little bit after 420 now. Um, I was actually thinking I should change my talk to something about like THC concentration analysis, but we're going to do something just as fun. We're going to play Minecraft. And just before I get into it, I'm just going to jump in and make sure nothing has gone to sleep on me while I've been getting ready. Like Minecraft server's running. I'm going to connect over into R and make sure I can connect to it. And by the way, that is my IP address for my Minecraft server. If you want to go in the world and troll me while I'm talking, feel free. <laughs> but let's start off with the... Oh, actually, one thing I did know, it's raining in the world. I don't want that. Let's, let's stop it from raining. Uh, weather clear, I think is the command. There we go. All right. So let's start off. Actually, let's, let's start off with the world. So this is Minecraft. I don't know if you've seen Minecraft. If you have a teenage daughter or son, it's likely you have. If not, it's just a fun open world environment. Um, you can play it in survival mode, which means that a bunch of zombies will come and attack you. I'm playing it in creative mode, which basically makes it into 3D Lego. And you can build all sorts of structures and play around and dig. And in this particular case, I've got a little pumpkin here sitting on a stand. And if I hit that pumpkin, <laughs> Nothing happens, because I forgot to run the script. Let me go back up here. <laughs> that was such an exciting demo. I'm going to put the block back in the world and run a little loop in R, which is going to do some stuff. And there's my punchline. All right, there's the block back. And now when I hit the block, welcome to New York Art Conference. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I actually wanted to use this to do all of my slides in Minecraft, but I got a bit lazy and I just have my title slide, but let, let's talk a little bit about it. So like I said, Minecraft, it's a really fun 3D uh, exploration and building game. If you have kids, you've probably seen it. Um, it was developed by Mojang, who was acquired by Microsoft in 2014, and I point that out simply because it gives me the justification for having spent the last few days playing Minecraft at work. Uh, <laughs> Um, kids do amazing, amazing things with Minecraft. Um, they get in the world and build all sorts of things, like this is the Red Keep in Westeros, you know, rendered in the Minecraft world. And they spend hours upon hours upon hours doing this. And what we thought, and particularly Carl Broman, who you can see over here, thought was, why can't we use this enthusiasm that kids have for playing in the Minecraft world, and rather than building up a wall brick by brick by brick, Perhaps we can convince them to learn a programming language, namely R, so that they could rather write a function to build that wall for them, and in the process, learn how to do programming. So at the R OpenSci Hackathon in Los Angeles uh, last year, uh, which was a really, really fun and awesome hackathon, we got together, six of us, um, to put together an R package with a bunch of simple functions that kids could use to build up more elaborate scenes and scenarios and actions within the Minecraft world. This was inspired by a book uh, that Carl had uh, that he'd given to his daughter called Learn to Program with Minecraft, uh, which was based in Python. And we thought to give R equal opportunity, we should create a similar kind of package in R that will, pro will provide these functions for kids to do these really cool things. The book provides a bunch of recipes uh, for doing all sorts of tasks, like you know, build a staircase, by writing a function in Python, and I'm going to show you how you can do that same thing using these packages in R. The thing that makes all this possible is the architecture of um, the original Minecraft program, where there's a server that's running, which basically represents the state of the world. And in my, car, in my case, I'm going to be running that server on an Ubuntu virtual machine, which is running in the cloud. And then there's a client, which is what gives you all the flashy graphics, or flashy if you consider those blocks to be flashy. Um, but that's the thing that actually renders the world from the point of view of the player, accepts the player's motions and commands, and then sends those back to the server, which then updates the world accordingly. So the way our package in R is going to work is it's going to modify the world at the server side, and then it'll be rendered in the client who's play when they're playing Minecraft. And you can do all this yourself. Uh, the server is open source, uh, it's called Spigot, and you can download it from all sorts of Docker repositories, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, you do require something called the Raspberry Juice plugin, which provides the API that we're going to interface in from the R language. You're also going to need 
the Minecraft program on your PC. Uh, unfortunately, as things stand right now, you can't use the Xbox or the mobile versions. You need to doubt, and not the Windows Store version. Uh, but if you buy any of those, you also get access to the original Mojang version, which is a Java-based application. Uh, and you need to sign up for an account at mojang.com to do that. But basically, once you've got everything set up, you've got the server running in a remote server. You've got the uh, Minecraft application running on your desktop. You've got a third PC, which in this case is going to be the same as the one that I'm running Minecraft on, which is going to run these packages I mentioned, Miner and Craft, which are going to modify the world. So we've actually provided two packages to do all this stuff. Um, the base package, which we put together at the R OpenSight Unconference, was called Miner. And this provides very, very simple building blocks to interact with the server, like connect to the server through an IP address, um, have a look at the world by seeing which blocks are rendered in the, are available rather in the 3D world, and monitor the player. So you can find the location of the player, which way they're facing, if they're hitting blocks, all that stuff is available as very basic functions. And that package is available uh, on GitHub right now. Then for those sort of high level projects, this idea of saying building a staircase, uh, we wrote a separate package which encapsulates some of these simple functions put together. The idea is the kids would write those things themselves. If they want to jump right in and have some fun, they can access some high level functions which are available in the craft package, which also has an, op an associated book, which is written in Bookdown, and they can sort of go through all the steps of how these higher level activities were created and learn out along the way by having a look at that book. And a particular shout out, shout out to Carl Broman who put together a lot of the content for that book. All right, and in fact, here's the book. Um, there is the link where you can find it and read it. It's called Our Program with Minecraft. And you can see if you have a look at the um, section on the left-hand side, all the things you can do, you know, build a staircase, build a rainbow, uh, build a tower, plant a garden, you know, all sorts of things that the kids might want to have fun doing. They can either write themselves or just use the recipes that are available in this book. All right. Now, for you, if you want to play with all of this, um, it's actually pretty easy to get things set up. Uh, one of the things that is provided uh, in the instructions for the minor package is a Docker file. Uh, if you haven't used Docker, it's been mentioned a few times in the talks today, it's a really convenient way of basically setting up all the components in sort of a virtual machine. In this case, that involves setting up uh, Raspberry Juice within Spigot, um, setting up all the ports to open up the connections to the Minecraft server. Instead of doing that manually, just by using this Docker file, you can then generate a server in just a couple of seconds. And all the instructions that show you, to, that show you how to do that are available in the minor package. All right. In my particular case, I'm setting up the server as a virtual machine within Azure and then running, running Docker within that virtual machine. Um, the specific virt virtual machine I use to do that is something called the Data Science Virtual Machine. This is a really handy collection of all sorts of open source tools, including things like R and Python already set up in the virtual machine. Uh, but it also includes some things that are, that are particularly useful for this project, which is number one, Docker itself which I use to run the Docker file, which then loads in all of the uh, Minecraft stuff that I need, and also provides the Tmux application, which is really handy for me when SSH drops the connection and my Minecraft server dives. You'll see that in a second when I get into it. Um, also, you might want to run this command in um, Spigot after you get things up, things up called default mode creative, because otherwise, within a few minutes, you'll be overrun with zombies and all the work you're doing is wasted. All right. so. To, once you've got everything set up, you've got the server running uh, uh, in the cloud or even on a local machine. Um, you can just install those two packages uh, from GitHub. So you can use Hadley's DevTools package to install them directly from GitHub, as you can see there. Then use the minor library. This function ncconnect connects R to the running Minecraft server. And then you can do so all sorts of things in there. And that's what you saw me do just a second ago when I wrote a little script called RC, which just connected the server and wrote a little message, so I made sure all my connections are working. The connections do tend to expire after about 10 minutes, so you might see me reconnecting if it's decided to disconnect while I've been sitting here chatting. So there are all sorts of functions that are available to you in the craft package uh, to, to modify the world based on these sort of lower level functions just to modify individual blocks. Uh, for example, when you saw me pop up the message that said, welcome to NYR conference, all I did there was figure out where the player was standing with the get player pause function. 
and then used a couple of functions that are available in the craft package to write some text up in space, welcome to New York Art Conference. And having done that, and because I'm in creative mode, I can sort of fly all around the space, you can see that these are just blocks that have been rendered in the 3D world, and you can kind of do anything you want with them. Oh, there's the rain back again. <laughs> uh, weather, weather, clear. All right, there we go. All right, so let's have a look what else we can do. So with those fun the, the basic building blocks of those functions, you can do things like, as we've already seen, get the play position. You can also set blocks, which means put things in the world. And there are different types of blocks. There's stone, and there's uh, wood, and there's ice, and there's glass, and there's gold, and all sorts of things. We have a fun example, which I, I meant to do with Jared's photo, and I didn't get around to it in time. But you can take somebody's picture, and then render it as different colored blocks. So you can actually see the picture in the Minecraft world. That's kind of fun. Um, here's another fun one. Um, you can actually do this sort of dynamically as the player is moving around in the world um, just by using a, a while loop in the R function. I'll show you how this works in just a second. So what I can do is I can go into R. I'm going to have a look at my scripts here. I'm going to put a couple of blocks in the world just to give me a starting point like I did before with the pumpkin. All right. Then I'm going to run a while loop which just has a look at the block the player is standing on. Well, actually, no, sorry. It's the while loop is to, to sit and watch if the player triggers things by, by cutting a block. But that little nested for loop you can see right there, what it's doing is it's having a look at, oops, I got an error message up there. That's not, ah, see, that's what happens when it disconnects. Do that again. Server return an error. It's not good at all. This is fun watching me code live. Let's see what's happening in the world. All righty. Powers return to normal. All right. One more try, and then I'm going to give up, because this is really fun to watch. So let's set a couple of blocks in the world. So what should have happened at that point is we have a block of ice. We're on top of a little blue block there. And we can wait for the player to strike. While that now, so do those things. All right, now it's where I think I destroyed the block too early. Because what was supposed to happen was, when I click on this block, it suddenly says you have the power of Elsa. And now what I can do is as I run around the world, and as you can see, there's a bit of water over here. As I get near the water, all right, I give up. What I was supposed to do was, <laughs> it's really cool. It was supposed to like, ice appears under her feet, and you're Elsa, and then you can stop it. But I give up. If you want to see it later on, I'll be over there, and you can see what happens. All right. Hopefully, my other demo works. So that's the fun one. All right. Um, one of the things you might have seen was messages that popped up that said you have the powers of Elsa. You can send messages to the players with the chat post function. Um, you can also grab the messages that the players send between themselves with get chat posts, because the players, when they're all in the world together, often chat to each other. And that lets you do fun things. And this is in the craft book of do things like you know, number guessing games. You can say, guess a number between 1 and 100, and all the players will type different numbers. And as soon as somebody guesses the right number, you pull that out with the chat post and give them a nice message. And that's a fun little game. But the one I wanted to show you was the one I've been playing around with the couple, last couple of days justifying my work, because this is a Microsoft thing, uh, was to write a little function in R that would generate a maze. So I've got a function called genmaze. Um, it turned out there were actually a couple of packages already on CRAN for generating mazes in R, but they're all based on these all um, huge, complicated neural network algorithms. Um, so I wanted to just run, write something simple that kids could do. Uh, so I just went back and did a simple um, recursive generative maze function, just the basic computer science 101. And now when I have these two functions, I can do maze is make maze 10.5, and you can see print this maze in ASCII, which is very exciting. But what I could do then is render that maze in the Minecraft world, and we could play in the maze. So 
Let's go back to my script here. So first thing I do is going to generate a maze. I'm going to put this altitude uh, uh, is how high in the world I want it to go. I'm going to choose a couple of corners for it. I'm going to clear some space in the world. All right, so what we should find now is when we look, oh, I'm still in the water over here. We've got some space cleared, which I think is going to be over there. Yeah, I can see a big hole. All right. Then we're going to add a floor for the maze and then just loop through the 15 by 15 maze I created and put some blocks on there. All right, there it is. So we can go over, fly into the maze. And now, let's see if I can solve it. This is a randomly generated maze, so I don't actually know where to go. And it actually turns out, like, this isn't a very big maze, but I played with this a bit, and it's surprisingly difficult <laughs> to, to actually solve these when you can't look from above, which you can actually do. Um, function F5, there we go. There we go. I can sort of look from above like this, and that makes things a bit easier. But more challenging would be is how can we write a little robot that's going to solve that maze itself. A little fun little exercise. Um, so I just wrote a little function which uses the left-hand rule um, to choose which way to go. I won't go through the details of this. All of this will be in my blog when I write it up next week. And then we can just write a little thing that checks if it's, fit, it's got to the end of the maze where I put a torch just so you can see the end. And it will just follow the left-hand rule as it moves around the world. Oh, it's decided it's solved it already. All right, let's try it again. No, all right. Oh, my demo is failing. This is so embarrassing. All right, one more try. Let's. It's all worked, but I tried it like 10 minutes ago. It solved it already. All right, anyway. Come, and come, to the, um, come to the booth over there. I'll be, I can show you all that running. But let's go to the end. All right. Um, so if you want to play around with this, like I said, it's all available there on GitHub at github.com, rupinsidelab slash minor. The book is at the link you can see on the screen right there as well. And that craft package, which implements the thing like doing Elsa and the mazes, uh, is also available at the link right there. And if you would like to come and play online, my server is running now at the IP address you see right there. Thanks very much. <laughs>